Welcome, everybody, back to the final cast. I'm your host, Josh. And I'm Brad. Hi, Brad. How's it going? I'm doing swell. How are you doing? I'm doing great, man. How was your Sunday? Pretty good. I'm sitting here. Uh, we're about to talk about some rock. And I'm uh, sipping on a Sprite. Life oh. is good. <laughs> is that your drink of choice? Yeah. Well, for now, it's the only thing I have. No. <laughs> All right. Well, that, so. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right, dude. Well, we are going to talk about rods. And uh, Brad and I uh, recently just did a episode about reels, and we kind of wanted to break it down a little bit. We didn't want to make an episode that's too long and too boring. Because Brad and I are two boring guys. Yeah. Isn't that right? Yeah. I don't have but, anything to say. <laughs> I don't know. I guess we'll start out with Brad. Do you want to go what your current setups are? Do you want to go, or your current current rod selections are, I guess? Or do you want to go start from kind of the beginning of when you kind of got into bass fishing or what, or whatever you were using? Um, I don't even remember when I first got into bass fishing. I don't know what I was using, so I can't start there. I think I'll just start current and fast. Yeah. So, first off, I'm going to start off with saying that a lot of guys, they they tend to go with rods that uh, fit what they like that feel, and then they get, you know, like five or six of those, you know what I mean? They don't actually get a rod for each application, which, I mean, it's not, nothing wrong with that, but after me fishing for all my life and then basically fishing for the last six, seven years on the river, I've decided to start getting different rods for uh, different applications. So I'm going to start out with my medium light and then I'm going to work my way up to medium heavy. So my first rod I have for my medium light is a uh, six foot ten Abu Garcia medium light combo, and it's uh, fast action, I believe. I don't know. Some of these rods don't really say the action on them, so you, you don't really know what it is unless you're, I guess familiar with other rods and then you can tell the difference between each tips and stuff but i'm gonna say that rod is amazing i've had that rod for five years maybe four or five years that rod is amazing uh, I, i've broken it a couple times abu garcia has replaced it each time because it's not an expensive rod at all 199 bucks and I actually got a good deal on it at Field and Stream because it was the last one they had in stock, I think. Mm -hmm. And it didn't – there was something going on there. can't remember what it was. But I, I got it for like 120 bucks, maybe. Great. I was, I was all in on that. Awesome. I ended up using that for uh, almost everything. I threw that – Strike King Triwing Buzzbait on it. I mean, there's nothing better than catching a smallie on medium light gear, man. Let me tell you, right. uh, that is a lot of fun. Throwing the top water on that medium light, it, uh, eighth ounce medium light, uh, it, it's it's a blast. It, you catch a 14 inch fish, it feels like a 17, 18 inch fish. <laughs> right. It's so, true. Yeah. It, it's a lot of fun, but. I, I use that rod a lot this year, and I've dedicated that rod to my finesse rod for the Ned Rig. I, I've used it a lot using the TRD. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think I've used anything else on it this year other than that. I might have thrown the Rebel Crawl in it, this really small one. Can't. Might have been earlier this spring, but for the most part, it's been my finesse rod. Uh, the second one I have is a um seven foot medium action american tackle rod with microwave guides and i actually won that through a contest 
for being on their pro staff. Um, that rod's all right. It's a custom crankbait rod, so I, I dedicated it to throwing crankbaits only, of course. <laughs> but I have thrown quite a few, uh, quite a few other stuff on. I've thrown a worm on it just because I got tired of throwing it on my bait caster when we we're at Dale Hollow. My hand was cramping from a bait caster, so um, that rod, yeah, that rod's okay. I do like microwave guides. I don't know if you've ever used them. Have you ever seen them? Um, I have seen them, but I've never used them. They do give you extra distance when casting, I believe. But I do. I don't think I really liked using fluorocarbon on that rod. I just felt like it slapped too much coming through those guides, and those guides are supposed to reduce that. Yeah. So I switched over to braid, and I, I started liking it much more. I, I tied a leader on that, of course. <clears throat> uh, Four-foot fluorocarbon leader. That seemed to help quite a bit. I did have to modify that rod a little bit, because the thing I don't I didn't like about it was the uh, bait keeper on the side of the rod. You, you ever see those bait keepers were on the back side? Yeah. Well, this one was on the right side. And my line, after casting, I would click the bail over, start reeling, and the slack line you get caught, man, it drives me nuts. I have to get, I have to take that bait keeper off the side of that rod. So I ended up pulling that out of there and haven't had issues since. But that rod is okay. Not my favorite. I don't use it very often. Um, I don't use crankbaits often though either. So speaking of um, like uh, you know like the bait keeper, I actually have those on a couple of my nicer lose reels and it does the same thing it's kind of weird it's like i don't understand how it actually gets down to there but i will catch the line occasionally and it's just a little piece of plastic that flips from up underneath the reel and it's on the front part on the bottom of the reel itself and i i will literally get that caught a couple times every time we go out if i don't snap it back into place it's kind of weird that you say that mm -hmm. um like I, I mean i even get the ones on my uh my rods that are on the front on the top of it but it's like in line with the rod i'll sometimes cast out dude and it'll loop up underneath there also it's kind of weird but you think yeah. it'd be hard it's like almost one in the lotto the chances of it happening but it it's obviously a lot easier than you think because i'll do it probably six or seven times you know when we go out fishing so it's weird. Yeah, I don't sure. know that. Yes. I, I can't imagine it being on the side like that. That would, because that would just increase the probability of it happening yeah. tenfold easily. Oh, it, it, <laughs> it increases it a lot because I, I would say within 10 casts, I would probably be getting caught in that at least five, six, seven times. No joke. Yeah. So I, I had to take it off. It was I, I took it off while I was on the water too. I pulled out my <laughs> pliers. I just wiggled it out of its little wrap. I'm like, done with it. Done. <laughs> it drove me nuts. But, like I said, good rod. I don't know if I would buy one again. Uh, if it breaks, wouldn't break my heart. I would just go out and buy a different brand. <laughs> uh, I know Mr. John Graves, he likes his American Tackle rods. Everybody's different, so it's whatever. Um. Yeah. Moving on to the next one I have, I think it's a seven foot uh, Fenwick HMG rod. That's what it is. I dedicate this rod strictly to my water. Rod. And, and hmm. funny thing about this rod is it feels more like a medium heavy than it does a medium. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Which is weird. Uh, yeah, I don't know what it is. I love the rod, though. It, it's a great topwater rod. I think I hit the nail on the head with that. That's for sure. Um, I like to throw the whopper plopper on it, of course. I don't want to admit that, but everybody knows it. <laughs> no. uh, I, I've been known to throw the spinner bait on it sometimes. and I, I, A little bit heavier. Uh, stuff you know I, I'm pretty sure I've thrown a jig on it I've thrown a chatterbait on it um, yeah 
I love that rod. Great rod. Uh, the the price ninety nine bucks for that rod is not bad at all either. So definitely recommend that to somebody who's uh, out there looking for something for a top water rod. And then my final is the thirteen fishing medium heavy seven foot three, I believe, and it's a fast action tip. And this. This uh, this rod is a little little different. I, I believe my 13 rod and then my Fenwick rod should be switched because this one feels like a medium. The other one feels like medium heavy. It feels like they should be switched, but I don't know. The 13 fishing rod, it, it feels nice. I like to throw my chatterbait on that because uh, the tip gets a lot of action. I feel the vibration quite a bit. Um, I, I, I feel like they kind of break easier than a, a lot of other rods i have heard that from a lot of other guys too and i know one of our listeners josh smith he's broken three or four this year mm-hmm. so i've broken one already a couple months after i bought it uh i was trying to boat flip a fish because i didn't have my net and it just it snapped and that was in a tournament also <laughs> so i uh i, I, I remember the fish that. though huh yeah yeah well, Jeff Durbin was making fun of me the whole day because I kept fishing with that rod. I just took the tip off, and he's like, dude, you're still fishing with it? I'm like, yeah, what else am I going to do, man? I only had, like, three rods with me. I didn't feel like changing all my stuff, you know? Yeah. So, uh, that's my current setup right now. Very what about cool. Yours? Um, I have been throwing pretty much exclusively Fenwick rods. And from the moment I decided to kind of upgrade from my little first wade fishing setup, which was the loose carbon fiber on an ugly stick from my Walmart. And that was kind of like the first uh, bass fishing kind of specific like rod and reel that I set up. Um, I went from the ugly, the regular ugly stick and I kept the carbon fiber and I got the ugly stick GX2. Um, both of them were two piece rods. The GX2 and carbon fiber was kind of like the first year that I sat down and like really kind of started weight fishing for smallmouth in the rivers, like on a regular basis. And um, that's kind of where I got better at it. Um, one thing that kind of drove me crazy, and it's why I don't own two piece rods anymore is when you start you get out and you start casting enough and you're throwing enough that that those pieces start to get loose Mm -hmm. and then like you know in the middle of a cast or something weird it pops off and or turns so severely that something messes up so that was one thing that i kind of learned is if you are into bass fishing and you are throwing a lot that two-piece rods aren't always the best thing now if you're obviously traveling or that sort of thing and you just want to take a travel setup i you know obviously it's not a big deal but if you're going to spend eight or nine hours on the water uh those things are probably going to work themselves loose at some point Mm -hmm. that's why i stopped buying them and when i started when i bought that quantum smoke that we talked about uh on the previous episode i went bought the first like uh, Fenwick rod that I I started out with and it was a Fenwick HMG and I bought a one piece and I want to say it was a six rod. yeah I want to say it's a six foot nine and like you mentioned before it retails for ninety nine ninety nine I think most of the time so that was the first like decent little setup that I bought fell in love with it loved it on the rivers the only kind of issue that I had and it was with the reel itself was that smoke is super light. Um, the smoke uh, spinning reel at the time, it was really sharp. It was all like blacked out. It had like a little bit of silver in it or something, but not much. But it's super light and it cut out a lot of stuff out of the uh, spool. Mm-hmm. And because of that, dude, if it rained or I even got near moisture, it seemed like that thing would like start to act real funny. Mm. That was the only issue. I love that thing, man. It was my it today probably still my favorite spinning setup that i've ever had it was ultra ultra sensitive it was a medium light six foot nine um i think it was a fast action or extra fast action tip 
and it was just perfect for smallmouth fishing and creeks and rivers man like that thing i could just it's kind of where i learned like to feel the difference between the rocks was with that setup and um um and i've stuck with basically with that same rod i've had different reels since then i had that verano and now i have a a lose pro spinning i don't know team pro spinning reel um and it's but they've all been on that same hmg and it's the same one too i've never broke that rod i've had that rod for four years That's going cool. on four years now yeah and um got a warrant now yeah <laughs> but here's the thing though is i like that rod so much i like its price point so much it's a sensitive rod is it the most sensitive rod out there no i'm sure there's some st croix legends or you know or g loomis like insanely expensive civic sensitivity rods out there um uh that stuff's just not my budget um you know i uh i kind of look at it this way now now that i'm fishing with you know five six seven rods now like to think about kind of dropping the coin on two hundred dollar plus rods you're spending like you know upwards between a thousand to two thousand dollars just on your your rods alone mm -hmm. it's just not something i have the capability i'd rather upgrade my kayak my paddles my life vests that sort of thing stuff yeah, that i know is going to last a while so um with that i did once i i do have a kind of an upgraded well let me go into this so I, that's my spinning setup right now is the six foot nine um hmg fenwick and uh the next i think i have i think i have two or three no maybe three let's just say two for sure because i'm usually carrying like five rods on me on the boat mm -hmm. and so i have two medium action fenwicks but they're called silverhawk twos and they're from cabela's and it's basically an hmg it's just it's just all black instead of that weird kind of copper looking color that that carbon fiber and copper colored stuff that's on the hmg it's literally the same rod the grips might be slightly different but it's not it's it's pretty much the same there's just that fake kind of cork stuff they use i think there's a little bit less of it on the silver rock twos but the price point's exactly the same so i think it's literally an hmg just a little slightly different and um, it performs exactly the same um, I started buying these uh, from Cabela's. There's a Cabela's kind of local to, to me and Brad here, and they're $99.99 normally. Well, Cabela's will often sell these things for $79.99, and I once even found them for $69.99. And so it's, you know, a $100 rod you're getting $30 off of is a pretty nice discount, like in a sense. Yeah. And, so the last time I caught that deal, I went and bought like two or three of them. And, um, and, uh, I've, I love them, man. I've got, I've got two medium action ones that have like moderate, I want to say moderate action. Um, I have a medium heavy one also, but it's shorter. I was kind of trying to, I was trying to buy a, uh, a heavy action rod to be honest with you but mm -hmm. they didn't have any i don't know that they make them but i was trying to buy i saw with fluke master on one of his videos about buying shorter frogging rods especially when you're fishing out of a kayak because you know a lot of times when you're trying to make that thing uh walk back and forth the, a frog that you're getting your rod tip really low to the water and the lower and more kind of vertical down you can get the easier it is to do that when you snap your wrist and when you're in a kayak you're so close to the water that you tend to hit your rod tip in the water and if you're using like a seven three because a lot of guys will buy seven three seven six whatever rods to chuck those those frogs as far as possible i don't like to do that i find that i get kind of start getting caught up in the vegetation the further out that i i go and so i'd rather in a sense fish an area and then once i've kind of canceled out that area or caught fish out of it move in on it i guess you know if you're going to go deeper and deeper into the pads or whatever you're fishing right 
So I was like, man, I don't like throwing frogs that far. So why don't I try what Fluke's talking about and buy it? Like, I think it's a 6.6 six or a 6.8, something weird like that. Or it might even be a 6.9. I just, all I was trying to do is aim to get something lower. I don't use that rod very often. Um, uh, just because I ended up not liking that it, it felt like it doesn't have enough power. It almost felt like kind of like what you were saying, that medium that medium heavy feels like almost like it's a medium yeah um so i uh i didn't i don't use it very frequently but it works i've caught fish with it like frogging it's just not very often but i tend not to throw frogs that much anymore anyways but um yeah yeah (laughs) it's uh but it i I love these rods, man. I I don't know that they even sell them still. I think they do, um, but I could beat the price points that I was finding, you know, with these things going on sale the way they were. So I do happen mm-hmm. to have a Fenwick Elite um, bass rod. It's nothing like a extraordinary. It's a, a medium heavy seven foot rod, and it's kind of what I've been throwing jigs on the most. So I actually currently don't own any heavy action rods. I'm looking to try to get at least one or two probably added maybe this off season or the next season. I'd like to at least get one uh, to try to see, you know, try to start throwing frogs more, getting up in the, in the really, really thick stuff. Um, I think I miss a lot of opportunity fishing like that. I used to fish like that a lot, but, um, it was back when I didn't really know what I was doing, and I'm sitting there chucking a a hollow-bodied life target frog on a medium action <laughs> rod and just losing <laughs> fish using like literally using a trilene monofilament and hooking. I'd hook in the fish, man, but I'd snap those line that line yeah. easy. I can't do. So or get it tangled around the pads and stuff. Yeah, and then you're sitting there like, oh gosh, this rod's gonna snap at any point when you're <laughs> pulling in ten pounds of salad. So, yeah. But, um, overall, I love these rods. Um, they are sensitive. Like I said before, they're not probably the ultra sensitive rods a lot of people throw that are really into to bass fishing. But they, they're it's an easy purchase on the pocket when you know you are trying to buy two three four rods you know you're like you know you're buying these rods and two or three of them are the cost of some of those st croix that you're looking at you know and um like especially with the st croix that are on the higher end i know st croix makes some some really nice entry level rods as well but i know they're not really making mojo yeah yeah you ever used one of those I have not. I th- almost bought one uh, this year, earlier this year, but I ended up uh, um, I de- when I was looking at those rods and I'm sitting there looking through and I'm like, well, let me go see what the Silverhawks price is right now. And that's when I caught them for $69.99. I was like, oh, dude, I'm going to buy two of them yeah. right now or three yeah. of them, you know? So um, I really like the Elite one. Um, I've thought about buying some of the step ups that the next up, you know, step up Fenwick ones, but I just I haven't done it. I, I'm kind of now, so I know some people might be the kind of the opposite of me, but I tend to spend more on my reels and my rods. And the yeah. reason being is I find that it's easier to break a rod than it is a reel. Um, so true. Um, you know, you, I was, you and I were together when I snapped that lose rod this year that I had, I really liked that one. It was super light, um, it casted a country mile. I really dug it. And I think I only had that thing a couple months until we broke it. And, um, you know, but uh, that's kind of how I look at it, man. I'm like, but it's funny because I bought those things and that's literally the only, the only rod that I've broken severely like that i broke the tip off of that gx2 mm-hmm. and i just had i took it to fisherman's headquarters over there in dayton and had them cap it or you know they just put a new one on it and it was like right before i went on a fishing trip somewhere mm. i don't remember where i went oh i was going camping i think with the family but that's the only time i've broken something i've seen guys break fenwicks really easily but not fishing (laughs) like they 
caught it in a tree and yanked, 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 and then saw it snap. And I'm like, they're like, well, that shouldn't happen. I'm like, oh, it should. Like, yeah. I don't think it would have mattered if that was $200 or $20 to do what you just did with Snap Any Reel. Or rod. Yeah. I've done that quite a few times, man. Uh, trust me, I've broken four or five rods this year. So, yeah. There's no rod at, no rod is like, I'm, I'm, well, I don't know. I'm trying to say, like, all these, all these rods, they're, they will break. They're, there's a breaking point to every rod. Yeah. Sure. But I, I've been kind of fortunate for it. So um, obviously you're going to get better grips, better guides, yeah. better probably overall blanks and everything with more money you spend. You're going to get better sensitivity. Yep. But if you don't have the money, you know, and but you're trying to buy like a good amount of rods and stuff, I've, I'll recommend those Silver Hawk 2s all, all day long, man. They're, it's just it's a killer price point. Um, you know, I was laughing. I think I, I saw somebody online the other day that was selling like five or six of them, you know, and I'm like, and they were, but they were HMGs. And I was like, Hey man, that's, those are good rods and reels. Like, you know, like I, I almost was like, anybody sees these things, please go get them. Cause you'll like them. You know, like I said, they're not the best, but they serve its purpose and they work great in my opinion. So. Yeah. I'm looking at these rods right now on Cabela's. And they, they look pretty similar to the HMG. Oh, I, it's literally the same thing. It's just rebranded. I gotcha. Yeah. So I, I was going to go into this, uh, the, the handles a little bit more. What do you like better, the cork or the foam? I like cork handles, but I don't own pure cork handles. Those um, parts of the, uh, the Silverhawk is real cork and part of it is like a weird paper that paper stuff they put on it it's like paper yeah. cork on it maybe on foam i don't know dude the hmg huh. has more of that crap on it yeah that was the one thing i liked about the silverhawk was the same price but it had more cork on it and the hmgs dude that you know where you're um on the spinning rods especially i don't notice as much on the on the bait casters because i'm holding more of the reel in my hand at you know where you're like the little um i don't know if you want to call it trigger but whatever part they call that on a bait casting reel so i don't notice it on those but on my spinning reels i put my thumb up on that first part that screws your reel down right and it's got that weird coat like cork paper on foam or whatever it is it's not real cork that stuff wears really easily and uh, that was my biggest gripe with the hmgs is that's that weird cork paper crap coming off of them real easy after some Mm. time like after like a season or two or even sometimes it'd be like halfway through the season i'm like oh here comes that crap coming off of it but i mean aesthetics wise it sucks but really does it mess with the performance not really so yeah yeah you, you always want your gear to look nice i understand that but it's not always going to look nice i mean especially with us we beat the crap out of our stuff on the river yeah <laughs> uh i used to have the old model of the hmg until i broke it earlier this year i sent it in for warranty and then sent it back to me with a new uh the newest model mm-hmm. and those uh those rod seats, or not the rod seats, the, uh, the handles were different. I know in the old model, it was like a rubbery texture cork feeling. The whole handle, probably 18 inches from the reel yeah. down. This has, the new one has kind of like a two-piece handle. It's like cork on the bottom, then it's like the graphite rod, and then a cork up at the top near the reel. Uh, I, I, I liked how that older model felt i don't know why they got away from that but i i can't complain that that warranty uh uh that warranty policy policy is nice i mean they sent me a rod and all i had to do was pay for shipping 9.99 yeah. so i didn't have to have a receipt i just had to have like uh the paperwork and then i had to take the pictures and everything yeah send it to them in an email all that stuff. So 
That, that's another good thing about Pickwick, for sure. And uh, I believe 13 Fishing was the same way, actually. That, they sent me a brand new rod out without me having to pay other than shipping. And so did Abu, actually. So that was cool. that was pretty cool. And I did learn that Abu Garcia and Fenwick run through the same company for that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I, I sat there. I called him one day and was talking to him. She's like, uh, the lady I was talking to said, you have two... Uh, you have uh, two... Uh, warranty claims here open i'm like really why is that and she and then she uh mentioned to me that one was the Fenwick rod one was the abu rod i was like man i didn't know you guys went through the uh, i didn't know they went through like the same company or whatever she's like oh yeah that's what we do i'm like well that's that's nice because then i didn't have to make an extra call to another company for that so yeah. i wanted to throw that out there because i'm real big on rod warranties I, I like to look into that before i'm buying rods and mm -hmm. i'm sure everybody else that's something you guys would like to hear as well very cool yeah that's a good piece of information man yeah now um are you throwing one piece or two piece rods one piece i will not touch a two piece uh i hate them for the reason that you said you're casting no one lose and that for that first two three feet of the rod go flying with my lure into the, into the water, I can't stand it. Yeah, that goes along with the uh, little bait keeper thing that I mentioned on my American tackle rod. <laughs> Just those little tiny things that drive me nuts. So I don't know if you got. Uh, did you receive a rod from uh, Brandon Palmer? The uh, yeah, I did. The, little miami outfitters rod have you used it at all no um it's a two-piece rod it's a yeah. bait casting rod though he him and i hooked up um oh i got a spinning two, rod yeah this is i didn't i wasn't a part of that group when you guys all got those i wasn't with you or whatever something weird okay. but um him and i met up before a demo day or something that we did over there yeah. and he had um he had one. He's like, here, dude, check this out. And I think it's a medium action. It's crazy, though, because it looks like an ultralight. Like, it's so thin. Yeah, it but is But I think that I need to maybe cut down. It's a two-piece rod, and when I put them together, it's, like, it's not fitting all the way down. So I think I might need to trim it down a little bit. You know, the connection point uh, that slides into the uh, upper part, it, it doesn't go down. There's, like, a good half inch to a quarter or three quarters of an inch gap where it doesn't slide into place. So I haven't, I haven't, I don't have any tools like that to cut that thing comfortably without worrying yeah. about splintering it or something. So you got any um, hedge but, trimmers? No, we don't have any bushes here. So oh, I was about to say, I, one of the rods I just broke, I just cut it in half with one of my hedge trimmers and it was a nice clean cut so I could throw it away and stuff it in my trash can. <laughs> you know what? I mean, I have something I could probably cut it with, but I'm a little afraid that it it might kind of get a little dangerous. I have a Dremel tool, yeah, but I no. think most of, this, most of the stuff I have, though, is I think it's wood, like wood type of um, stuff. My uh, wife's grandfather was into woodworking, and yeah. that was one of the things he left behind. And so I think it's not a good cutting tool for graphite or whatever it's made out of. So I don't know. I could give it a shot. Brian, Brian was going to – we meant to – Brian has one too, and he had the same issue. We meant to cut him down up in Chicago, but we never did. Yeah. And um, but it it it's a sharp looking rod. I think mine's like a silver color, and uh, I'm excited to get out and use it. But yeah, and I think that's an American tackle based rod, isn't it? Or the components are possibly. I I want to say yeah. Uh, I know he designed he designed the rod himself. Sent the design to a company and then they build it for them okay. but i don't know exactly but yeah that was a two-piece rod i ended up gluing it together because that's how much i hate two-piece rods <laughs> nice and it worked it worked until i broke it yeah because yeah. like i said i'm hard on my gear <laughs> you were there when i broke it i forgot yeah. about that <laughs> You're like, dude, I broke this rod already. And I'm like, were yeah. you stuck? You're like, yeah. 
Was it Ned Rig? Yeah. yeah. Or a swim bait, maybe. Something like that. I can't remember. But, man. Yeah, that was the that was the first day I used it. I mean, literally, the, I, I got it that day, or the day before, used it the second day, broke it. It's like, man, figures. <laughs> that happens, man, in the rivers. I, I, you just find that it's really easy to break stuff because you get hung up in so much stuff. Like yeah. flowing flowing water is like, in smallmouth bass fishing, there's nothing like it. But at the same time, sometimes there's nothing more frustrating at oh. the same time. You're sitting there laughing because you're like, man, this water looks great. And then you throw and you throw the perfect cast and then it's hung up instantaneously in a rock or a, a tree that you can't see. And you're like, no, oh, that's just how this kind of day goes. You know, well, that same trip where I broke that rod, I remember I got I got caught in swift water. My my pole got caught in that tree and then I ended up losing my net. And I had to wade over into that tree just to get my lure undone. Man, that was frustrating. That was a frustrating day. <laughs> We're out there like, oh, this is supposed to be beautiful, scenic, and then you're just over there cursing at every tree you throw into or whatever. But <laughs> I remember that day. You were so mad, too. It was hilarious. Yeah, it was. Well, that that was dangerous floating through there that fast and then get caught, caught on the tree. Yeah. Yeah. I had to release that bail and then beach my kayak and be extra careful wading over to it because that water was pretty quick yeah but, but uh-huh. like i said man, it's you know that's brian and i have a short review we don't we don't carry really high in gear so we're not going to preach to anybody like oh st croix is where it's at or or fenwick is where it's at you know i just found fenwick's for you know, I found a little model that I liked. It's fairly cheap. I know a lot of people have thrown Fenwick in, you know, HMGs and that sort of thing. And it's it's a nice it's a nice rod for what the the price is. You know, especially if you're if you're going to be buying like multiple rods, it you can't beat it. You know, a lot of people you know that are that fish will be like, oh, ugly stick is you know. Those are just as good, you know, or whatever, or durable, and they are. You know, I, mm. I've, I still have <clears throat> the ones that I've had forever. I think I got rid of one of them. I might have gave them to somebody that GX2, but I still have my old school ugly stick two piece rod over here in the corner, man. And that thing is a tank. It, you know, I've caught, and it's, it's, it's a small rod, dude. You'd laugh, and I've caught some like 15, 20 pound channel cats on this stupid thing. And uh, it pulled them out, you know, it's crazy. Um, but at the same time, that rod isn't built for sensitivity. Like I remember taking it bass fishing for the first time and it was kind of yeah. where I decided to get something else. Now at the time I didn't know squat about bass fishing. So I just got the ugly stick GX2, you know, <laughs> My, Oh, it must be better. Yeah. Um, but it, uh, it, it does what you know you need it to do it's just a little harder to feel bites on it you know it was really hard for me when i have the cheaper rods and this goes even with my fenwicks because they are on the cheaper side um sometimes you'll get that that effect of where you can't tell what's rock and what's a a fish sometimes especially if if your lure is bouncing off the rocks just perfect and you get those double tap kind of hits on the rocks and it starts to feel like fish bites you know maybe maybe a more expensive sensitive rod is going to help you kind of distinguish between what's a, you know, a fish strike versus what's a rod or hit tapping the rocks. But I mean, like I said, dude, I don't have the funds to drop, you know, a thousand, two thousand dollars on, on rods. If I had like a sponsorship on a rod, you know, rod company. Yeah. I'd for sure take, you know, some nice, super expensive or nice expensive rod like that but as far as buying that stuff man it's just it's not right now it's not my means i i look more forward to up upgrading to a pedal drive as opposed to dropping that kind of coin yeah. you know so you know to each his own you know if you if you've got the means to do it go ahead and do it why not you know that's awesome you know i'd like to get out there and throw some of the more fancy stuff like that too just to see if there's a difference but you know the uh the cheaper end stuff kind of works for me like i said before i'd rather spend the money on my reels 
where I know that the kind of the more money I'm dropping on my reels, the kind of, I guess the better that I know the components are overall, you know, and it's just, it's, it's more or less likely to break at any point anyways, whether it is a cheaper reel or, or expensive one. It's just, that's how I kind of feel about it. I know if I spend the 200 to $300 on a reel, that that reel is going to be around for a while. And with my rods at any given moment, you know, you, you're the, you can attest any given moment, man, you could break one of those things regardless of what the price point is on it. So yep. I don't know. That's just kind of my thing. The, it's, it's the probably if you kind of look at it you're like that's probably the least durable kind of thing that you're using fishing wise as a fishing rod overall just in general so no i'm with you too man uh i don't really like spending a whole lot on rods because i I don't have the money either but i will say a hundred dollars is probably my my range $100 Hundred dollars yeah. a rod. That's that's my range, I'd say. Rod uh, reels, they're a little less. Maybe a little bit more. I, I might spend a little bit more on reels, but yeah, I'm with you for the most part. But I'm gonna turn you on to with something that I found too. Like, and we've talked we talked about it in the last last episode. If you're a left-handed guy, dude, it, always be shopping for them because left-handed reels will go on sale, and it will sometimes be some seriously crazy discounts brian and i've touched on this before i scored that 280 dollars lose magnesium freaking reel last year for 150 dollars out the door you know and that's 50 dollars a little bit extra you know than what you're kind of used to spending maybe brad but it's it's night and day difference man of what those speed spools are versus that magnesium one it's completely lighter all the components are stronger and everything like that but it's it's what's nice about being a left-handed guy like that i'm not left-handed but i didn't see the point of switching hands because you know you and i both started out spinning gear and you're using your left hand as a retrieve i was like well when i picked up a bait caster i picked up a right-handed one originally and i was like this doesn't feel natural, you know? Yeah. And so I picked up a left and I'm like, well, I think I can manage this. And I've thrown left-handed retrieve since then. And I don't understand either. I'm right-hand dominant. Why wouldn't I want to hook set with my right hand? So, but. Um, well, that, that's what I'm doing. I'm hook set. And I have the reel in my hand. And I'm hook, hook set with my right hand. Yeah. It's, it's weird, but uh, apparently we're abnormal yeah. <laughs> in hey, more ways. <laughs> I've heard Kurt, Kurt Smith talk about it before. He's like, you're, you're wasting more time switching hands when you're throwing right. So you, yeah. you're getting more cast in, cast in per minute, as John Graves says. Yeah, <laughs> cast per minute. Yeah. Um, I, but, you know, those left-handed reels, dude, they'll go on sale sometimes, and it's and yep. you'll find some really good prices. The tur- that tournament pro one that I have, that's like a hundred and ninety-nine dollars, and I got it for one thirty, something like that. So I'm like, you know, I was able to get some really nice high-end, higher-end uh, reels. Not highest end, not like some of the nice four hundred dollars Shimano's, five hundred dollars Shimano's are out there, but high end for me, you know. <laughs> but you know, I've scored great prices on them, and I won't buy them at full price. I don't think ever, yeah. you know. I just I don't have the funds for that either. But um, if you shop around right and you pay attention in. I guess kind of the thing is, is if you're out and about and you're in those shops, just go take a look because sometimes those stuff will just go on sale randomly also. You know, I I found both those lose reels on sale around right before Christmas time, like maybe two to three weeks before Christmas, right at the beginning of December. And um, it didn't, the one of them lasted a while. It lasted through the month. So I was thinking it was like an overstock and they were having trouble selling them, but I don't know. So pay attention out there, you guys, you can get, you can score some really nice deals on some really nice high end reels. Yeah. I feel like most of the uh, guys and gals that listen to this podcast are in the same boat as us. Yeah. No, no pun intended there, <laughs> but I know, I know a lot of guys, <laughs> 
<laughs> Sorry. That was lame. I'm not even a dad and I'm throwing out dad jokes here. I know, dude. Like I you would you were so that was a, that was a good lame joke though. <laughs> no. Uh yeah, I know I know uh kayak fishermen there they're they're more geared toward towards budget. You know, of course kayaks are cheaper than boats, so it, it makes sense. I feel like a lot of our listeners are in the same boat as us. And I'm sure they would appreciate this info for sure. Yeah. So I was going to ask you about uh, uh, micro guides. Does any of your rods have micro guides? No. I no? don't have any on them. No. Okay. I, I have a couple. Yeah. I have one spinning rod that has micro guides, and then a bait caster has micro guides. And I yeah, can definitely tell a difference. Are you talking about the American Tackle system, or are you just talking about micro guides in general? Oh, just micro guides in general. Okay, yeah. Um, let me think. No, I don't. I was kind of running through. I don't think that I don't think the elite one that I have has it. So no, they're all just your normal ones. So, but yeah. you know, I. I feel like those I, things uh, make a difference. Uh, yeah, I've been. A lot of people told me about ducket rods. Try out ducket yeah. rods. They come with them, right? Aren't, don't and they have. The, don't they use the micro, uh, the microwave or whatever? What is it called? Uh, yeah, the American Tackle microwave guides. I believe yeah. those those do have them. And Luz is also starting to come out with a combo. It's like an American. It's like I don't know what I forget what it's called. American Hero, mm. and those have the microwave guides on it as well. Okay, yeah, I have yet to try try any out, but you said it kind of helps with your uh, casting distance. distance. Yeah, yeah. Well, any microwave or any micro guide is going to help with that for sure. But the, those uh, those American Tackle guides, they're they're a little unique. They're shaped like a cone. And then mm-hmm. the guide is the bigger guide at the bottom of the cone is bigger, and then the one at the top is smaller. It's supposed, to, excuse me, it's supposed to reduce the sway going through those. But I can't really tell much of a difference between those and microwave guides. Which I love microwave guides. I can cast far with those. Mm-hmm. So that's just my experience with them. I thought I'd throw that in there and ask you about it. Yeah. No, I am yet to do it. Um, I'd like to try it. But, um, yeah, uh, I think if I do it, I probably will just maybe – I thought about – because you can buy those guides and just put them on a rod, existing rod, right, the microwave ones from American Tackle. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not – yeah, I'm not real big on those. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, you're just talking about – because you said microwave. I thought – you're talking about micro guides, right? Yeah, just in general. Okay. Starting to get really confused here, dude. Yeah, it, it gets confusing after a while. I mean, they all basically do the same thing. Right. Uh, but, it is what it is. Yeah, I'd like to try it though. I've heard I've heard a lot of good things about it. Especially, I have a few friends that have those ducket rods with them on it, and dude, and they rave about them. So. Yeah. That's another rod I'd like to try. I just don't like the look of them. The whole yeah. all white ducket rod. I don't mind the white. I think it's the weird ducket uh like um logo with the yellow and stuff on it but with it, which is weird yeah. it's so stupid because look i mean here i am saying that and then the lose is the same thing <laughs> it's the same thing <laughs> <laughs> it's just the not like around. bam in your face yeah but uh yeah right. my buddy a buddy of mine at work raves about him he's like dude you gotta try ducket rods he's like they got good prices too and they are they have some good price rods so it's- do they sell those in stores around here? I've never seen one. Yeah. Um, I know Phil and Stream used to carry them. I know Cabela sometimes has them. So they're just a little hard to find. They don't carry a lot of them. So yeah. it's uh, – and then with all the new companies that are coming out, dude, it's like I think they're kind of – they're getting pushed to the side with the latest and greatest, you know, or, yeah. you know, the newest kind of bad, like, favorite rods and – um, some yeah, of the other I, stuff like Do- I'm starting to see like Dobbins rods yeah. over at Field and Stream and yep. but um, I've heard a lot about I mean I've heard a lot about Dobbins and Favorite lately. Yeah. Um, I mean I'd like to try them out. It's just 
like yeah. I said, man, I'm 